An important aspect of teaching teenagers is getting their attention and keeping it. In this video, we're going to look at three tips to do this, along with some practical ideas you might try with your classes. Knowing what your students like and dislike, both in terms of activities and general interests, will naturally help students to stay more motivated during classes. At the start of the course, a competitive quiz can help you learn something about your students and also familiarise them with the organisation of your coursebook. Split the class into teams and ask one student to be the spokesperson. Only the spokesperson can give a team's answer. Then, start asking questions about your coursebook, if necessary in your student's first language. For example, how many units are there? What starts on page 125? After, say, 10 questions, finish the quiz by asking each team to decide on the unit that looks the most interesting and why. Make a note of their preferences and try to bring these subjects into lessons whenever possible. Teenagers have shorter attention spans than adults. This means it is crucial to give as few excuses as possible for their minds to wander. First, be very explicit with task instructions. If students are working in pairs, who are they working with? Do they need to take turns? How long do students have to do the activity? Is there a time limit? Second, very common activities to keep students listening and motivated. For example, instead of drilling new vocabulary using the audio, model it yourself. Try changing the tone of your voice, for example, whispering the vocabulary and ask your students to do the same. Are you about to begin a reading about a real person or a place? Before you read, give your students a few minutes to find three facts about the person or place on their phones. Reward original answers and then use this information as a quick scanning task to see which facts are mentioned in the text. Sometimes, lessons don't go to plan. Your students can't understand a concept or activity, or perhaps they simply aren't listening. This isn't unusual, of course. Young brains need a break. So when you recognise this situation in your classroom, it's time to change direction. Use extra resources in your coursebook, such as puzzles. Get students up on their feet to play a game. And at the end, Get them to sit next to someone new. Or simply tell your class a memorable story of your own, related to the topic. The aim here is to get back students' attention and help them to engage with the lesson again.